Warhammer 40k is full of courageous heroes, plucky officers, and merciless overlords that drive the narrative of the game. Without these infamous characters, Warhammer just wouldn't be the game that we all know and love. In-game, these captains, commanders, bosses, and lords are collectively known as leaders. In this video, I'm going to break down how leaders join units, what rules they follow, and what benefits they confer to their army. Leader is a rule commonly seen across many characters in the new 10th edition, and allows these champions to join a unit of their followers to form what is known as an attached unit. What unit can these characters join? Each datasheet features a list of bodyguard units who are eligible to have these heroes join to form an attached unit. Choose carefully though, each bodyguard can only be joined by one leader and they cannot leave a unit once they are attached. You'll have to choose before each game what bodyguard unit you wish to lead for that battle. The attached unit is treated as one unit while they're on the battlefield, but if they're destroyed, they'll count separately. One bodyguard and one leader makes two destroyed units. Each leader will surely bring their own weapons and benefits to their attached unit. You can find the rules for each leader in their datasheet. This Primaris Lieutenant, for example, will give lethal hits to his attached units thanks to the Tactical Precision ability. This is true even if the character has already suffered damage. Those loyal bodyguards will step in front of any bullets, blasts, or blades that threaten their leader. Let us know which leaders you're most excited to use in the new edition in the comment section below, and make sure to like this video. The sudden arrival of fresh reinforcements can turn the tide of battle. There are lots of rules in Warhammer 40k that allow your units to arrive in the middle of a battle. In this video, we're going to talk all about reserves and how to use them on the tabletop. In the movement phase, after you're done moving units, you can proceed to the reinforcement step. Whatever rule allows a unit to go into reserves will specify how that unit arrives, but no matter what rule you use, that unit will count as having made a normal move. That means you can't move again after you arrive on the battlefield. Your units can otherwise act normally after they arrive, so load up your guns and get ready to declare some charges. In the 41st millennium, warriors can teleport, tunnel, or parachute into battle to reach their foe. Let's talk about the Deep Strike Universal Special Rule. If a unit wants a Deep Strike, then in Step 5, the Declare Battle Formation step, you can put this unit into reserves instead of deploying it normally. Then, in the Reinforcement step of your movement phase, this unit can arrive by Deep Strike. Just place it 9 inches away from any enemies horizontally. You'll count as having made a normal move on the turn you deep strike, but you can still choose to shoot or declare charges. Deep strikes will provide an excellent opportunity to get your units in position and to claim new territories on the battlefield. Although many elite units can natively teleport into battle, some warriors are just left walking around the battlefield. Don't worry, there are always options for them as well. Any unit can be placed into strategic reserves to start the game off of the table. During Step 5, you can select up to 25% of your army to start the game in strategic reserves. That means, if you're playing a Strike Force game, up to 500 points can start off the table. Don't worry about your Deep Strikes, though. This limit is only for strategic reserves. You can start other units off of the battlefield as well, as long as they have their own rules to do so. These units in strategic reserves will be safe as the battle begins and can join in the fray when you need them most. When you decide that the time is right, your strategic reserves can arrive on the battlefield to help bolster your beleaguered warriors. They can be set up during the reinforcement step of your movement phase after you've finished moving your units. When you're bringing in your strategic reserves, you'll have to check the current battle round. If it's the second battle round, you can set up your units wholly within 6 inches of any battlefield edge so long as you're staying outside of your opponent's deployment zone. If it's the third battle round or later, you can ignore your opponent's deployment zone. That means you can be set up within six inches of any battlefield edge at all. You may notice that there's no way for strategic reserves to arrive on turn one, but there's also no limit on how long you can wait in reserves. You can bring your models into the battle on turn four or five now, so long as you arrive before the end of the game. 
No matter what battle round you're on, you'll have to set up your units more than 9 inches horizontally away from enemy models. Gone are the days of using your own battlefield edge to arrive within 9 inches of the enemy. That's gone with the new addition. Some units are designed to sprint across the table, but others can just start there. The Infiltrator special rule allows your models to start further upfield than normal, securing the best parts of the battlefield for your forces. When you deploy a unit with the Infiltrator rule, you aren't limited to just your deployment zone. You can set these fighters up anywhere on the battlefield more than 9 inches away from the enemy deployment zone. Just watch out for enemy infiltrators. You'll also have to stay 9 inches away horizontally from enemy scouts. That means you'll want to put infiltrators down before your opponent does. Using the infiltrator rule is an assured way to gain a foothold on the battlefield, aiding you in your wars across the tabletop. Expert pathfinders, vanguard organisms, and cunning scouts map out the battlefield ahead of their main force. In Warhammer 40k, the scout special rule represents these models sneaking their way upfield. If a unit has the scout special rule, it'll have a number right after it. That represents how many inches that unit can move pre-game. At the start of the first battle round, a unit with this rule can make a normal move up to that many inches. Of course, that won't stop these units from moving again during their first movement phase. Watch out though, these scouts can be blocked by other enemies. When making a scout move, you have to stay at least 9 inches away horizontally from all enemy models. If your scout's unit is embarked in a dedicated transport, that vehicle will get the rule as well. So long as every model embarked inside has the scout's rule, you can move your transports at the beginning of the first battle round. This special rule is sure to open up lots of cunning plays as you move your units across the battlefield. Hungry for more 10th edition content? We've got a lot more headed your way, so make sure to subscribe to this channel to get notified as soon as it's up. As well, you can already find high-level breakdowns in the war room.